The Jurassic Park, released in 1993, is one of the most favorite movies of every 90s kid. Be it the variety of dinosaurs or the story about their extinction and revival, it kept everyone hooked. But is it really possible? The theory explained in the movie sounded so authentic that it kindled the possibility of seeing the dinosaurs again. In this video, we will learn about the basics of genetic engineering and whether the dinosaurs can be revived or not. Chromosomes, DNA and genes are the basic terms of genetics. We should understand these terminologies before we dive into the dinosaurs. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all organisms. Chromosomes are thread-like structures found inside the plant and animal cell nucleus. The unique structure of chromosomes keep DNA wrapped around a protein called histones. Without this kind of packaging, DNA will be too long to fit into a cell. Next comes the genes. Genes are a section of DNA. They carry hereditary information from one generation to the other. So no wonder if all your family members have funny looking noses. Genes contain a set of instructions for the cell to produce structural and functional proteins. These instructions determine an organism's appearance and behavior. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes and a total of 20,000 to 25,000 genes. Each and every cell of our body has all these chromosomes in their nucleus. Only the genes responsible for a specific function and structure will be added to based on the cell in which it is present. The rest of the genes remain dormant. Based on this concept, researchers are trying to revive dinosaurs and make Jurassic Park a reality. In the Jurassic Park movie, scientists extract dinosaur DNA from a mosquito preserved in amber and recreate dinosaurs using genetic engineering. In reality, though the researchers have excavated a lot of dinosaur remains, they were unable to extract the DNA from any of them. The DNA materials degrade over the period of time as quickly as compared to the bones. The oldest DNA the researchers have successfully sequenced is just 1 million years old. But the dinosaurs lived 66 million years ago. Paleontologists have excavated the skeletons of dinosaurs from many sites. They have even identified heme, the blood protein, and blood vessels of the giant creatures. But they couldn't find any complete structure of DNA. Another study conducted in 2012 in New Zealand calculated the half-life period of DNA to be 521 years. According to the study, roughly after 1.5 million years, the remaining DNA strands would be too short to give meaningful information. Till date, it's quite impossible to find a good strain of dinosaur DNA which contains all the genetic information. Some researchers have found that even the chromosomes can get fossilized. Studies are undergoing to learn how this fossilization occurs to uncover the secrets these chromosomes hold. Besides learning the chromosomes, is there any other way? There is something called atavism. Atavism means ancestral characters. On rare occasions, babies are born with tails. This is because the tail genes inherited from monkeys were not deactivated somehow. Hence, there is a possibility to revive dinosaurs from its closest relatives by gene activation. According to researchers, birds are the lineage of dinosaurs and they are the closest relatives of them. They have rudimentary trails and fingers in their embryos. While developing, genes restrict the tail growth and fuses the fingers to form wings. According to Jack Horner, a famous paleontologist, if we identify and deactivate these genes, we can grow a dinosaur from a chicken. But will just a tail and finger turn a chicken into a dinosaur? No, because we need to know about the entire character trait of a dinosaur to activate all the dormant genes. It is impossible without a DNA sample. This brings us back to square one. We haven't extracted a proper DNA sample, so your dream of visiting Jurassic Park may not come true. On the brighter side, using the knowledge we acquired on genetic engineering so far, we can very well bring back passenger pigeons, West African black rhino, saber-toothed tiger, golden toads and a lot more species which were declared extinct in the last 100 years. While we bring back the extinct species, we must also be ready for the ecological imbalance it may cause. 
For example, if we de-extinct the woolly mammoths, which disappeared about 10,500 years ago, will the rest of the herbivores be able to survive alongside them? Given the size, the mammoths will consume the greeneries at a much faster rate, leaving the tiny herbivores starving. It may lead to extinction of another species. Hence, before diving into this idea, ecological balance should be taken into account. We will meet you with another story in the next video. For more such infotainment videos, visit our channel Black Story.